Yeah, okay, fine. I'll address the elephant in the room. In the two previous ciphers in fiction videos, the production values were pretty low. I submitted requests for pro-level lighting and cameras, which were rejected because there's no budget for them. Finance suggested we subscribe to some doodle animation software or something, as long as it's free. So here we are. Lloyd C. Douglas published Magnificent Obsession in 1929. Born Doya C. Douglas in 1877, Lloyd was an ordained Lutheran minister and served in both Los Angeles and Montreal before retiring around 1926 in order to start writing full-time. Between 1919 and 1927, his papers were primarily religious. Magnificent Obsession was his first novel, which was turned into a movie with Robert Taylor and Irene Dunn in 1935, and again later with Rock Hudson and Jane Wyman in 1954. Three other novels given the Hollywood treatment were The Robe, White Banners, and The Big Fisherman. Magnificent Obsession includes mention of a fictional diary written by one Dr. Wayne Hudson. Fans of the book demanded that Douglas actually write the diary, which was published in 1939 as Dr. Hudson's secret journal. It was turned into a TV series, which ran from 1955 to 1957 for 78 episodes, starring John Howard as Dr. Hudson. The novel features a rich young playboy named Robert Merrick. One day, Merrick is out boating on a lake when he gets hit in the head by the yacht's boom and thrown into the water. He's rescued, and some of the bystanders rush to the nearby home of Dr. Hudson to grab an oxygen tank for him. Unfortunately, while the tank is being used to save Merrick, Hudson, a brilliant brain surgeon, suffers a heart attack and, without access to his oxygen tank, dies. Merrick recovers, but is shunned by the staff at the hospital for being responsible for their beloved Hudson's death. Out of remorse and a vague sense of guilt, Merrick decides to become a brain surgeon, and Hudson's assistant, Nurse Ann Talbot, gives him Hudson's journal as kind of an inheritance gift. The journal is encrypted. Ann had studied it for years off and on, but had been unable to crack it. Ann tells Merrick to focus on the first page, which may be a preface or introduction. Based on what Merrick knows up to this point, the cipher is an unknown type and the possible words list includes Dr., Wayne, Hudson, Cipher, Journal, Hospital, Medicine, Brain, and Surgery. The reader is only shown the first page of the cipher. I've never been good at reading handwritten script, so I had to convert the cipher to computer text. And I'm not going to read this. If you want to tackle the crypt right now, pause the video and come back when you're ready. Ann Talbot immediately calls Merrick's attention to the two Greek letters at regular intervals in the text, Mu and Omega. She asks, if Alpha is the beginning and Omega is the end, what meaning would the twelfth letter, Mu, contain? Merrick answers, the middle or midway. If you want to tackle the crypt now, pause the video and come back when you're ready. The hints indicate that each line consists of two parts, and that the Mu and Omega characters are just markers. So maybe the spacing and capitalization are red herrings. Merrick himself gets tired of dealing with mixed case and writes the message fully in uppercase. Reformatting it, we get the following. If you want to tackle the crypt now, pause the video and come back when you're ready. At this point, if you need it, I'll remind you that I'm using this crypt as an example of rail fence. However, it's also easy to say this is also a mix of complete and incomplete columnar transpositions, with a width of two. One last chance to solve this crypt on your own. Okay, each line is one message. What happens if we take one message and display it as first and second halves on separate lines? Figured it out? How about in rail fence format with two rails? R E A D E R and continue. Alternatively, using my preferred way of decrypting columnar transposition, write the segments in rows as we have and read the plain text off in columns.
adding word spaces. Reader, I consider you my friend. Okay, the rest of the message should be easy enough to do on your own. But what if we wanted to use our probable word attack? The one word in our probable list that actually is in the crypt is cipher. The reason I know this is that I already checked. The letter C appears on lines 1, 2, 3, and 6. The letters immediately following C on these lines are line 1, C and I. First half of line 2, C and C. Second half of line 2, C M E. Line 3, C I V. Line 6, C P E. Given that our probable word is cipher and every other letter appears in sequence in the first half of line 6, it's only natural to check for I in the second half of the same line. We get two hits. IGH and IHR. This indicates that the first and second halves of line 6 are related. CPE and IHR both start at position 8 in the respective halves, further showing that we're either dealing with a two rail fence per line or a columnar cipher of width 2. Regardless, just put the two halves on separate lines and read the plain text off as you like. F O R D O I N G T-H-I-S, and continue. Lloyd Douglas never actually calls this a rail fence, but Merrick adds the spacing between letters and does solve it as one. One last chance to solve the full cipher on your own. The full solution reads, Reader, I consider you my friend and commend your perseverance having achieved the ability to read this book. You have also the right to possess it. My reasons for doing this in Cypher will be made plain as you proceed. If you want to read the full novel and learn what happens to Hudson, Merrick, and Talbot, it's available at the Australian Gutenberg Project page. Link in the description below. That's all for now. See you at the next bookshop. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.